people in the general populace take a short-sighted view. They're worried about what the world will be like in five years or 10 years. And some people um, balk at, at the whole concept of, of whether or not it's, it's for real thing. There's still a lot of people that it's, a, it's difficult to accept the science of climate change. I'd like to think that it's different because I think that we see more of the extremes and the changes and we're hearing about it more here in Alaska. So I would like to think that it's different, that Alaskans are more aware of the changes that are happening. But, um, but I, you know, I wouldn't guarantee it. It is such a different world, it's such a different ecosystem. There are so many factors that are extremely different here. If you look at data, there's a, an uptick or a change in slope about 1970. In Alaska, air temperatures have changed. If you look at logs of permafrost, you can see that the temperatures are changing from the top down. It brings up the question of a tipping point. Have we passed the point of no return? It would be one thing if we lived in a world where we didn't know any better. And maybe 200 years ago, we didn't know any better. We didn't have scientific equipment. We couldn't measure things precisely. But we have the technology today to know exactly what we're doing to the planet. I think that's one of the reasons it makes it so hard for people to accept it in the socio-political climate is that it means all of us making sacrifices. Alaska is warning us. If we don't heed that warning, we too will see impacts at the magnitude they do. But if we heed that warning, if we take sensible steps to reduce the impact we're having on our climate, we can prepare for a resilient future and we can make sure that is a future that we want to live in and that we want for our kids. <laughs>